G'day everyone, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews and today we're going to be having a look at how to save power on your Android device. So let's just get straight into it. The first thing we're going to do is pull down on our drop down menu. Now you'll see here that I already have location services, Bluetooth, mobile data, AutoSync and NFC, they're all off. So they're all using power. They're all constantly running in the background, drawing on power. Mobile data, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, your mobile phone is going to be looking for the nearest tower, always looking for the best signal. So you turn that off. You don't need it. You've got Wi-Fi. All your apps are going to be able to draw on your Wi-Fi. So we turn that off. Bluetooth, if it's not required, turn it off. Location services will affect the use of some of your apps. So your check-in services like on Facebook or um, other applications that you might use. I know for me I use Google Now a lot. That won't work without that location services or it won't work as well. NFC off, location off and sync. Now this will reduce data usage and conserve battery power. Keywords there, conserve battery power. You will have to refresh your apps automatically. However, it's going to save you battery power and it's going to conserve your data. Now, the next thing I'm going to go into is through our settings menu. Now, in here, I'm going to go back into data usage. I'm going to turn on mobile data. If you do need your mobile data on, click on background data. And here you can automatically select the apps that you want to refresh in the background at any given time. You might just want Facebook and your emails to sync. So just have those two turned on. All the rest, you can click them, turn them off like that and they will not sync in the background. That will save you data and it will save you battery power. If I go back to the settings menu and I'm going to scroll to sounds and vibration. Now here you can turn off vibrate. You don't need vibrate unless you're in a noisy environment so keep it off if it's not required. All your touch sounds and screen lock sounds and vibration feedback and haptic feedback on your keyboards you don't need that on. If you like it on it's going to chew more power. I have them all off. I don't need them. They're um, more of a bell and a whistle than anything else. The next thing we can go, do is go into our display settings. Auto brightness. We can have this down low when we're indoors. No need to have it cranked up. No need to have it adjusting all the time, up and down, up and down. When you go back outside, you will have to crank it up. And the shortcut to do that is here, right there. And you can slide it up and down nice and quickly. Another thing we can do is go into screen timeout mode and minimize the amount of time the screen is on for after you've just checked an application or just check, checked a notification and you put your phone down. I have it to 30 seconds. 15 seconds annoys the absolute crap out of me but you can put it to 15 seconds. The lower the better for battery power. Screen mode adaptive display I'd suggest turning that to basic mode Turn off your lead light and keep screen turned off when in a bag or a dark place such as a pocket. No screensaver. Don't use a screensaver. All it's going to do is chew your battery. Now, I'm also going to go in and have a look at battery. Now, if we go into battery usage, we can see what applications have been chewing the most power throughout the day. Obviously, the screen is the brightest thing. It uses the most energy. It's always going to be up the top there. Android system can come and go up and down and that does need to run in the background. But you can see here, internet, Facebook and podcasts are the most apps that I've been using. And they've drawn a fair bit of power from my phone, roughly 20% throughout the day. You can see that I'm on 74%. So if I had those off for the day, I'd probably still be on around 90%. Some phones you can save battery by optimize, optimizing the apps that you have. So if I go in here on my Samsung S7, all these are save in save power mode. Then you have some that are automatic. They will go into save power mode after three days of inactivity. And then I have some that are disabled because I want to get the notifications all the time. I don't want to wait and have to refresh and turn the app on. You can also, on your device, you might have, depending on what version of Android and what phone you have, you might have power saving mode and ultra power saving mode. 
I suggest that you use those when required. If you have 5% battery left and you need to get somewhere and then call someone in one hour, turn on ultra power saving mode. Everything will be disabled except for phone calls. When you get to the destination, you'll be able to use it. Use your phone to make that phone call and happy days, you'll get through to your next charge cycle. Now there is one more thing you can do. If we go to wallpapers, especially on an AMOLED device, this is perfect. Now you want to choose a wallpaper that is black. AMOLED devices only light up the pixels they need. So if you have a black wallpaper, it only lights up the colored and the lighter colored ones. I've gone into this one and I cropped it in my gallery and I cropped it to all black and I set it. Now only 20% of my screen roughly is lit up with those widgets and applications that are there. Um, that's going to save an awful lot of power throughout the day. So I suggest you make it a black background and follow all those other little steps and you will see an increase in the amount of battery you have at the end of the day. Hope you liked the video guys. Don't forget, subscribe, share, like, comment. How do you save battery power? Leave a comment down below. Love to interact with you all. Thanks guys. Check ya.